Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Thank you for listening to Now Hear This, a Faith Comes By Hearing podcast. Welcome to our show. Welcome to a special episode of Now Hear This. Today is part one of a two-part interview with the founder of One Hope, Bob Hoskins. Bob, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here, Aaron. So, Bob, I've... uh, done a little bit of, of research on, on One Hope and the different things that uh, One Hope has done over the years, but uh, I know that in 1987, you had a vision of children around the world who were suffering, and you felt a call from God to do something about it. So I'd just love to hear more about that. Yeah, it was uh, in 1987, during a time of fasting and prayer, that I had a vision in which I saw horrible things. I saw that Satan was going to marshal the demons of hell with one objective, and that was to attack and destroy an entire generation. Prophetically, I saw what today we understand, but what then was unheard of. I saw child soldiers. I saw child sex slaves. I saw how through hunger and famine, uh, I saw how through the proliferation of alcohol and drugs and sexual promiscuity, with diseases like AIDS, Satan was going to slaughter literally millions of children. And then you, you also got the call to reach the children through, through leadership, correct? Well, after the vision, I was for days I was weeping. In fact, it was embarrassing for my family. We would go into a restaurant, and I would see children, and I would just begin to sob because I had seen Satan's plan for those children. And so I, for days I was crying out to God. Uh, what am I to do? What, why, why did I see this, and what should my response be? And during that time of fasting and prayer, uh, and by the way, Dale Berkey, whom I think you all know here, mm-hmm. uh, I called Dale in to uh, spend days praying with me and he, as we sought God's direction. And God spoke into my spirit and said, uh, the only thing that will rescue these children is truth, and it's my word that is truth. I want you to take my word to the children of the world. I have sent my word to heal the children. And then he added something that was quite strange to me. He said, and you will do this through leaders. How did you feel about that? What was your response to to that particular word? Well, at that time, I I was leading um, a ministry that we were the largest publishers of Bibles and Christian books and, and literature in major languages like Spanish and French and Portuguese. And so he said leaders. I assumed that meant people of political influence. Uh, I didn't know people like that. So I got the names of the 50 most powerful people in every Spanish-speaking country, president, prime ministers, heads of banks, ministers of education. And I took one of our beautiful Vita leather Bibles, embossed their names in gold, and sent those Bibles as a gift to those 50 leaders in every nation with a letter challenging them not only to read God's Word, but to use God's word in the governing of their nation. And I was totally uh, astounded that within weeks I was hearing from these people. They were responding to me. It was astonishing. And and what kind of responses were you getting? Uh, As a result, I was the guest. I was invited as Mm -hmm. the guest of the president of Chile, the president of Venezuela, the president of Nicaragua. Uh, And, uh, for example, in in Chile, uh, after my visit with the president, uh, he— he bought Bibles to give to every member of, uh, of his staff and team. Uh, but the most interesting letter came from uh, the minister of El Salvador of education. And uh, he thanked me for the Bible, but he said, Mr. Hoskins, I'm a believer, but our country suffered years of civil war, and we have the highest murder rate in the world, and it's our children that are being destroyed. They have no future, no hope. I wish that we could give every child their own copy of the Word of God. Is it possible? Would Vida provide uh, Bibles for all the children of El Salvador? Well, God had said to me, he had shown me the children. He had said it was his Word, and he'd said we'd do it through leaders. So I I took it as 
as a response to God's prophetic word, and I ran through the office saying, look, the minister of, uh, of education has asked us to bring Bibles to every child. And I said to my assistant, send him a cable. You know, this was before email or fax or all these modern technologies. So we sent him a cable and said, yes, sir, Mr. Minister of Education, promise we'll give the word of God to every child in every school in El Salvador. And she sent the cable, and then she came back and said, how many children are there? And I said, I don't know. And she said, what? You don't know? You just promised to give them every one a Bible. She called the consulate in D.C. and came back and said, there are 986,000 children that read. You need a million Bibles. Now I tell people I really started fasting and praying, oh, God, what am I going to send these children? That's that's a, an amazing story that that God would would answer that, that call that he laid on your on your heart with with such clarity and that the these leaders in in countries around the world would respond to to this receiving of the word of God and that just goes to show you the the power that God's word has and that the spirit moving in the lives of people has and so it takes a lot of commitment and conviction to do the kind of work you've been doing for for over 30 years now uh what what keeps you going? What motivates you? Well, perhaps I should uh, go back to El Salvador and say that uh, once I had committed myself, we began to say, what should we actually send the children? Because I realized you send an eight-year-old uh, school child in El Salvador a 1,600-page book with a foreboding black leather cover. He's probably not even going to open it, and if he does— He's going to start reading in Genesis, which is good because he'll read about creation. But once he gets into Leviticus, and I mean, things get pretty complicated and difficult for adults. And I said, uh, you know, the history, the background that's uh, prominent in the Old Testament can be acquired later. The first thing those children need to know is God loves them. God has a plan for them. And that's found in the Gospels. So we, we harmonize the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in a, so that it read just like one great story. We illustrate it with some, some uh, graphics and pictures. And in Spanish, we call it El Libro de Vida. And then, of course, I had to trust God to print a million of them. And through the faithfulness of his friends, and I just want to urge those uh, of your partners and friends that are listening to this uh, podcast, that they are so vital to the Bible ministry, to uh, faith comes by hearing, and to our ministry, One Hope, because it was the response of God's people that provided the million books that went to El Salvador, and the churches organized and began the distribution, and they covered the whole country in the middle of a, of a horrible war. Uh, we have people describing walking past dead bodies to reach a village to take God's word to children, and children rushed home to show it to their parents because most of them had never owned a book. And parents and children begin to read the Word of God together. Pastors begin to report that hundreds and thousands of people were coming to the church for the first time. And within six months, a civil war that had gone for eight years, the United Nations couldn't stop it. The United States sent troops and couldn't stop it. Within six months, the civil war ended. And there's been peace in El Salvador for 32 years and people can say it's an accident, it's a coincidence. I say it's the transforming power of God's Word starting in the heart of a child. And when that happened, I said, oh my goodness, if we can do it in El Salvador, why don't we do it in Ecuador? And then we began to expand our ministry, as you said, around the world. Mm. So you've continued this work of, of giving Bibles to children all over the world. Um, how, many, how many Bibles have you, have you sent out so far? Well, uh, three years ago, we celebrated the presentation of the Book of Hope to the one billionth child. And uh, as of now, uh, we're at about 1.4 billion children in 170 countries that have received uh, a, their Book of Hope. And I should say that we don't just drop books off. We, we partner with national churches. We train the, the volunteers who either go into schools or some other uh, a venue and personally present the book to the child. So those 1.4 billion books were delivered from the hand 
of a, of a loving Christian. And that's happened in over 170 countries of the world. And uh, this year we'll reach, an, our, our faith goal is to reach another 115 million this year. Wow, that's amazing. And that takes a, a massive commitment from you and, and the people you work with, your staff. And can you, can you tell us about a, a testimony, a story where you really saw God work in one hope. Yeah, well, how many, how many months do we have? Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, there are just literally thousands of testimonies. Let me just let, give a broad picture. The, the Book of Hope was the first officially distributed scripture in the Soviet Union after 72 years of atheism when the minister of, of religion for the whole Soviet Union gave us permission to originally bring 50,000 books of hope for uh, schools in Moscow. Uh, The response was so great that he then asked us to bring a book of hope for every child in the Soviet Union, 142 million children. And God began to open the door. When we began distribution in 1990, we couldn't find one church or one pastor in the whole of Russia that could help us or cooperate with us because the church had been totally destroyed and and the underground church was afraid that when we said they want us to take the Bible to the, to the schools, the, the underground church said, yet, 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 no, it's a trick. They want to get Christians in the school, and then they'll arrest them. Two years ago, I was back in, in Russia to preach at a pastor's conference. There were 3,000 pastors. Now, remember, in 1990, we found only six pastors total, and none of them would work with us. There were over 3,000 pastors, and the moderator asked, how many of you pastors first came to Christ when an American team came to your school and delivered the Book of Hope? So many stood that he had the ushers count, and there were 1,786 pastors who had received God's Word in their school as a child because a loving American volunteer had come. So that's just, that's a broad picture. Mm. That is amazing. And it's for those who are listening, it goes to show that as you you reach out to children, as you reach out to anyone, that they uh, are impacted by the Word of God, and that as God works in their lives, they will will grow and mature in in faith and become an impact to countless more. You know, I said uh, you, uh, you heard me say Americans win the schools because there were no Christians. Uh, it was a, it was the mayor of of uh, what was in Leningrad, uh, Mayor Subchek, that when I said we can't do it because we can't find Christians here to to distribute, it was a communist mayor who said, "Well, you have millions of Christians in America, bring them to do it." And we never thought of that, but to 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 say that today no Americans are involved, it's all an indigenous program, and we're on track now, a plan we call Hosanna to plant 10,000 churches in Russia in 10 years. Hmm. And uh, we're into the, we're into the uh, third year now, and we're running ahead of schedule. And so we have teams of, uh, of uh, Russian Christian volunteers who give what they call a year for Jesus. They get in buses, they get in vans. Uh, we have a video of them going in uh, ski mobiles out where villages where no car can go. And they go in and distribute the book. They have a crusade, and then they have they have a, a, a one of the workers uh, or a couple left behind to plant the church. And so we're, we believe we will in ten years plant ten thousand new churches in Russia. I think it's good for for everyone to understand that as Americans going out and and sharing the gospel, we can we can definitely impact people, but we can't reach people the way that native speakers and native people living in the country can reach Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And so equipping brothers and sisters around the world with the gospel of Christ and and encouraging them and uplifting them in prayer so that they can reach out to their communities and reach out to their neighbors and the people around them is going to make a massive impact in no matter what region it's happening because heart language, the heart language and, and the, the native speakers are much more understanding of the culture and understanding of of the gospel as it relates to those people and you know so, and that's what excites me about the ministry of faith comes by hearing is that you go out to these countries and you 
you solicit the very best speakers within that culture to do your recordings so that when those uh, recordings are processed and go back out uh, in whatever form it may be, uh, it's speaking right into the heart of the people in that country. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's one of the things that I, am, I admire so much about the vision of the Jacksons and about the Faith Comes by Hearing ministry. It's incredible. I appreciate that. It's, I think it's something we do. We walk hand in hand as we, we reach out to the various people of the world uh, through various means, um, either focusing on people who are of an oral culture or focusing on children or all of our other various partners. We're all working towards the same goal uh, running parallel to each other, um, holding hands, and moving forward, advancing the kingdom of Christ. Thank you for listening to the first half of our interview. Check back in two weeks for the conclusion of our talk with Bob and to hear more about work being done throughout the world for the gospel. We at Faith Comes by Hearing, along with our valued partners, record and distribute audio Bibles. Given that over half of the world's diverse population are oral communicators, which means that they have little access to formal education, or are living in a different culture from their own, or perhaps don't even have a written language at all, the only way many of them will ever encounter the truth of God's Word is by hearing it. So, for each episode, we'll take a few minutes to highlight one of the language recordings we have available by playing a featured reading from the Bible. Today's section of Scripture is John 1, 1 through 1-3, which reads in English, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Here it is spoken in the Kyrgyz language. Kyrgyz is spoken by over 4 million people and has a literacy rate of 98%. To listen to more of the Kyrgyz Bible, or many other languages, we invite you to download our Bible Is app today, or our Bible Is website at bible.is. You've been listening to Now Hear This, a Faith Comes by Hearing podcast. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to hear us talk about on the show, email us at podcast at faithcomesbyhearing.com. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace.